guys, it's Yana again with Medish, of course, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the ribs. This is sort of a sequel to the video on the composition and structure of the thorax, so if you're interested to get a baseline first, you can quickly check that out. The link is in the description. So the ribs make up most of the thoracic cage, they're the more obvious parts. And basically they function mostly for respiration and for protection. Humans have 12 pairs of ribs, but some people could have an extra pair of ribs called the gorilla ribs. <laughs> I know, I just found out too, but you can tell just by looking at a person and there are no side effects as far as I know, so no biggie there. Oh, and by the way, the gorilla ribs are also called lumbar ribs. The ribs are separated from their rib neighbors by intercostal spaces. Uh, the intercostal spaces are not one of the popular kids in the school of thorax nests, but they are definitely very important, and so I'll be talking about them in another video. Unlike the attachment of ribs to the vertebrae behind them, the ribs are attached indirectly to the sternum through middlemen called costal cartilages. So it's basically like a woman playing hard to get and the poor ribs have to pass through her elder brother just to get to her. And just like in real life, some end in wedding bells and some end in tears. <laughs> also an important property of ribs is that they are really light and very strong. I mean if you had the same weight of bone and steel, bone would actually be stronger than steel. <laughs> yeah you heard that right. The same steel used to make buildings and stuff. And although this is a property of our bones in general, it's actually pretty freaking sweet. <laughs> so obviously since the ribs are bones, they're strong, but this helps them in their protection area. Okay. But this is where they could also turn out to be foes instead of friends, sort of like friendly fire. <laughs> If the ribs get fractured or broken, there is a risk that they might puncture the organs they were meant to protect. Internally, ribs are also spongy. They're spongy bones and they contain a lot of bone marrow, which form blood cells. The body of ribs are flat and highly curved, and we will see this in more detail in yet another video where I'll be talking about the general anatomy of a human rib, so stay tuned guys. And this brings me to classification of ribs. The successful guys that get the girl are the true ribs. The successful-ish ones are the false ribs and the pathetic failures that end up swimming in a pool of their own tears are the floating ribs. We say the false ribs are successful-ish cause though they did get the girl but they used say street smartness. <laughs> They don't connect directly to the sternum, but their cartilages connect to the cartilage of the rib above them. So it's like they're itching it right. They couldn't do it on their home, so they had help basically. So that's why we call them successful ish. The true ribs are ribs 1 to 7, the false ribs are ribs 8 to 10, and then the fluty ribs are the last two pairs ribs 11 and 12. Aside this, Groups can also be grouped based on their structure. So basically we have two criteria, structure and then mode of attachment to the sternum, or in this case, our hog bra. When we look at structure, ribs are classified into two parts, typical and atypical ribs. The typical ribs are ribs 3 through 9, and they basically all look alike, while the atypicals are the rest, which would be ribs 1 to 2, and then 10 to 12. I don't think I'll be going deeper on the structural differences, but if you really want it, maybe I will. That's it for today guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please take a second to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Bye, see you soon.